In my last video, I posed a question to both Llama 3 and Phi 3 from Microsoft. And in that video, Phi 3 appeared to have got it right and Llama 3 appeared to have got it wrong. And it got me thinking. And even in the video, I said, I would love to run the same question to Llama 3 a hundred times and just see how its answers potentially may vary between each time. So one way to do that is in Python. So the good news is we are using Olama um, as a means to interact with these large language models. And something that Olama comes with is its own little web server and some Python bindings. So what that means is I can install the Olama package in Python and I can start interacting with Olama on my local machine um, straight away. I can just specify the model and start asking questions and getting responses back in Python, which I think is really cool. Um, so to get started, what we need to do is we need to pip install Olama. If you're brand new to Python, not quite sure how to do that. Plenty of videos on the channel, but leave a comment. I'm happy to go through this in a lot more detail. But for the sake of this video, we are going to be asking the same question 100 times uh, to Llama 3 to see how the answer varies between each time we ask. So pip install Olama. Um, I've already got it installed, but if I didn't, I would do that by simply doing potentially in a uh, notebook pip uh, install Olama, shift enter on that, already, already installed, which is awesome. Okay, and then the first thing I wanna do is import Olama. Now I've already downloaded and installed Olama, have it running on my local machine. Uh, and so when I do the import, the good news is it actually has a usage example in the pypy.org uh, package listing. So I'm going to copy this one out. We're going to go through it in a bit more detail. So what's this one actually saying? I don't need to import twice. What it's doing is it's defining a response variable. Um, that's just a variable. The response variable has a llama chat. Now we want to use llama three as the model. And then we've got a list of messages. And for us, we just want one message. The role will be user as opposed to potentially, you know, system. And the second part is the content. And that will be our question. So what I might do to make things a little bit easier, I might actually put our question up here at the top. So question is equal to, and we'll, we'll do three quotation marks so we can have multiple lines. And I'm going to take the original question from my previous video. Okay. And then what I might do is I might run that once, see what the response sort of looks like. And if it's giving me way too much information that I would have to you know, sort of figure this out hundred times, I'm going to see if we can get it to give us a multiple choice response like A or B, for example. So uh, for those who maybe haven't seen the previous video, the question is as follows. There is a cake on a table in the dining room. I walk over to the cake and place a plate on top of the cake. I then pick up the plate and take it into the kitchen. And the second part of that or the final part is which room is the cake currently in? Now, as a human, we can probably look at that and go, well, it was in the dining room. You didn't put the, didn't, you didn't specify that you put the cake on the plate, which is pretty common behavior. So I'd expect a large language model to potentially infer that because that's sort of what they're doing. They're sort of predicting the next thing. Um, and, and then it, so what we're trying to get from this is the answer is dining room. If it gives us kitchen, um, it, it's technically got it wrong. So to ask that question, what I'm gonna do is take our question variable, shift enter on that. So that's now available. You can see that's down here. There's a question variable there, and I'm gonna put that into our content. So paste that one in here. I'm gonna shift enter on that. That's gonna take a few seconds to run. Normally, Olama will stream out every word, but in this case, it's gonna go off. It's going to get all the words and then replace them back to you or give them back to you. Uh, you simply place the plate on top of the cake and then move the plate with a cake underneath to the kitchen. The cake itself remains in the dining room. That is absolutely correct. Now let's automate this a bit better. So let's run it one more time, actually. And then let's see how it does. So give it a few seconds. It's now running. Okay. Okay. Still in the dining room. That's fantastic. Now I'm going to tweak this just a little bit, um, just so it gives us a, a bit of an easier response. I'm going to say, you know, something like a dining room and we'll give it B kitchen. Shift enter, shift enter. See if that changes anything. Okay. Where are we at? So it's now having a bit more of a think about it. Um, again, this is running locally on a MacBook Air. Um, so not the fastest computer in the world, but it does all right. Um, let's have a look. Blah, 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 blah. A dining room. Okay, great. Now um, I'm going to give it some more instructions because I guess that's part of it, right? Making sure it can follow your instructions. So I might say something, you know, like, you know, please provide one letter response. Okay. Shift enter, shift enter. Okay. This time it's gone 
B, which is, I need to double check, which is the wrong answer. <laughs> it's gone kitchen. Um, so this might have thrown it, um, especially with the last word being before that being kitchen. Let's shift enter, shift enter again. Okay, weird. Now it's gone A. This is going getting weird. It's definitely, the, okay, now it's B. <laughs> okay, shift enter, shift enter. It's B again, um, which is really weird. So if I take off the please, you know, provide a one letter response and shift enter, shift enter. Um, does it give us the correct answer again? Okay, let's have a look. Uh, the answer is, drum roll please, A, dining room. How interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and run that a couple more times before we do a, a loop over 100 times. Um, a, dining room. Now, this is really interesting. When I don't kind of tell it to give me a one-letter response, A or B, um, it starts to get the answer correct more often. Let's have a look. Yeah, dining room again. This is really interesting. So, why don't we leave it as is, um, and why don't we put this into a loop? Uh, let's just loop it 10 times to start, and let's see if it's a, you know, 10 out of 10 times gonna be dining room, because it's all back to the prompting, right? And so this is this is the weird future we're moving into, where data is no longer about numbers and you know data, it's actually about language. Um, and so yeah, let's, let's get into it. So what I'm gonna say is yeah, something like for I in range, okay, using the range generator function, um, and everything within this loop is gonna run uh, 10 times. Um, I is a temporary variable, that could quite easily be something else. Um, and what I might do is just to make things a bit more separated, I might put uh, a few dashes, oops, let me scroll down a little bit, a few dashes between each response so we can easily see that they're broken up. I'll do one dash and we'll do that times 10, so we get 10 dashes, shift enter on that. Let's scroll down and might speed this up a little bit because it might take a few seconds for each response to come through and then we'll go through all 10 responses. Okay, well, we're almost through our 10, and for a good time there, I thought it was always gonna be dining room, but it appears now that it's saying kitchen, so I am very confused. Let's keep testing. Now let's have a look. It's got, you know, dining room appears to have been, oh no, there's another kitchen, so it looks like, yeah, look, it's overwhelmingly dining room. I, I believe at a glance, it's 80% dining room. Um, and it makes me wonder, is that how some of, the, some of these large language models need to operate? Do we need to ask the same question a, peer, a number of times and we take where we get the same response the most amount of times? Now, having all this text is a bit weird and annoying. Now, there's a few ways that we can sort of tweak this. We can save the answers into a, a variable, maybe a list or a dictionary or something like that. Um, but what I would like to be able to do is maybe get a bit more specific around um, please only provide a one letter answer, oops, answer, A or B. Shift enter, shift enter. Let's see if that's any, good. okay, now it's all Bs. That's very weird. Um, how interesting. What if I went B or A, shift enter, shift enter. Now they're all A's. It's the last um, with a <laughs> bracket at the end. Let's see, does that change anything? Okay, A, okay, it's gone weird. Um, now they're all A's. Now I am just very confused. This, you know, how you prompt is so important to these models, but this is very weird. When I give it this additional, um, you know, one letter answer A or B, if you are unsure, provide the letter C, shift enter, shift enter. Okay, I've given it, okay. It's a simple one, it's dining room. It's dining room, it's dining room, it's dining room. Okay, so it's kind of ignored my other instructions and it's gone off and done that. Um, look, I am I think more testing is required. I think we're gonna have to do a lot more playing around with these models to get the right prompting to get the right answers because the worst, you know, it's, yeah. It's just interesting. I'm a little bit blown away, to be honest. You know, kitchen, dining room, kitchen. Yeah, I would love for this thing to be able to give me sort of just A or B answers. Now, I, look, I'm, I'm thinking out loud here, but I, I think we could save these responses and then have a second pass where we just ask the model to extract the answer, um, which, I, which I think is probably the best way to go. So why don't we do that? So why don't we go, um, why don't we just go two tests for now, get this right, shift enter, shift enter, 
And what we now have is two responses to just test out. So which room is the cake currently in? A, dining room. B, kitchen. Oh, quite the answer. So A, dining room. And the next answer is A, dining room. Okay, perfect. So this is um, the answer. And so what I might want to do is I might want to create a list called answers, something like this, answers equals empty list. And then what I might want to do is I might want to append the answer to that list. So we just have a list of answers and we can go through each answer and extract if it was A or B, even so it's giving up so much more information. Now I would love for it just to give me A or B as its answer, but it appears to struggle. And when I do that, um, it seems to default to one over the other, depending on the order in which they are placed. And look, maybe it's, it's maybe I need to rejuggle, you know, uh, maybe I need to say, you know, multiple choice question and then give it a possible answers. Now, this is how a multiple choice question and answer would sort of work. So why don't we run that now and let's have a look how it answers when it has. OK, the correct answer is a dining room. A OK, perfect. So. We've got our answers. Why don't we go ahead and is one of these steps. Why don't we say answers dot append. OK, and we're going to append this part of the response, which is the answer itself. And we're going to shift enter on that. First, we're going to run this 20 times and we'll speed this up. OK, there we go. And I've just had to scroll through these. And to be honest, they are all dining rooms. So maybe, hey, maybe I'm a bad prompter because multiple choice question Boom, which room is Kate currently in? Possible answers. It has got it right 100% of the time when I ask for it 20 times. But I did promise 100 times. So why don't we go ahead and shift enter on that. We've got our answers, shift enter on that. And we'll type in 100 here and we'll hit shift enter on that. And we'll let that run. I'll speed this part up. And then we're going to have our final sort of list of 100. And then we can go through that list and see how it performs. Okay, that's finished running a hundred times. And so now what we have is we have an answers list that has 100 answers. And so the next step is to basically extract out from each of those answers in that list um, what the what the response was in, I guess, simple terms. So let me do that. Okay, so how do we do that? So what we can do is we can have a look at a random answer. Let's have a look at 66. Um, the correct answer is a dining room. And when I look at this, it, it feels pretty consistent that it's got dining room, dining room. It's all kind of the same. So what I probably start by doing is probably say for answer in answers, which is our list. We can say something as simple as if, you know, dining room is in the answer, uh, then we probably want to increment some sort of number. So what we might even be able to do is what do we want to increment? Well, why don't we have one called answer equals oh, answer A. Okay, and that's equal to zero. And you guessed it. We'll do uh, we'll do answer answer B is equal to zero. And so we'll say A if A dining room is in the answer, then we'll say answer A is equal to is plus equal to one. And that basically says it's equal to answer A, whatever answer A currently is, plus one more. Um, and then we'll do an elif, and then we'll say something very similar. So we'll take a whole copy of this, but rather than A dining room, we'll say something as the correct answer is B kitchen. So we'll take that one there and we'll pop it in there. Now there is going to be um, a no answer category. Okay. And we'll, we'll, we'll create that actually. So we'll say no answer found sort of thing. So no answer. And that'll be the, the fallout of this whole sort of statement. So what do we got here? So we've got answer A, answer B, no answer. If A dining room is in answer, answer A. If kitchen is in answer, then it's answer B. And then we'll say else uh, it's no answer plus equals plus equals one. Okay, shift enter on that. That's finished. That's run. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at answer A is 98. Answer B is two and no answer is zero, which is expected. So the takeaway from all of that is what is the takeaway? Well, 98% of the time it got the correct answer. 2% of the time it got it wrong. 
is this scientific? No. Am I satisfied with that? Well, I'm, it's kind of weird. I'm worried that because I already knew the correct answer, I have crafted a prompt, which, you know, makes almost make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that, I'm testing it. I'm getting that correct answer. That's awesome. When I am able to upfront know the correct answer, I think where it becomes tricky is when you maybe don't know what the correct answer is and you're kind of relying on this this system to kind of come up with the correct answer. And I think that becomes problematic. Um, and so what am I trying to say? That becomes problematic because you're kind of living it up to a, a large language model in AI, which I would never recommend. So what's the takeaway? Lots of testing, crafting the correct prompt. And if I had ran this twice and got kitchen both times, I might convince myself that it's it's terrible, it's useless, like my last video where I prompted it once and got the wrong answer. I've prompted it a hundred times and 98% of the time it's correct. That's correct in my book. So any previous videos where I've said Llama 3 got it wrong, I take it back, it gets it right in this example 98% of the time. If this has been at all useful to you from the Python to the problem solving to, you know, doing stuff with large language models, uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps the channel um, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.